polarization just keeps getting worse in Washington. It's as bad as they've ever seen it, and it seems to be making Americans very upset. And page 45. This is politics. And page 45. Is this where we want to set the bar for future presidents? Clinton was the worst in Tonight, history. It was a vote along party lines that made President Clinton only the... I'm not for gay president. marriage. I believe marriage is between they a man and a woman. I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. Climate. And so does John. Obama, and Nora, a number of incidents turned is violent this afternoon. Our limousine was set on fire. It's my decision. Smoke it's not a baby. Child and protesters hurled flashbangs. The U.S. Navy has been armed with systems of blast bombs. The U.S. Navy has been armed with systems of blast bombs. The U.S. Navy has been armed with systems of blast bombs. The U.S. Navy has been armed with systems of blast bombs. The U.S. Navy has been armed with systems of blast bombs. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to episode number two of Bob and Weave. I'm Bob Ruff. And I'm the Weave. Yep. And for those of you that are enjoying our wonderful program on YouTube as opposed to on iTunes and you're looking at us, you'll notice that Zach and I both look like lumberjacks. Yep. Uh, that was uh, not by design. We just came into work today, both of us wearing flannels. Yeah, at least they're different colors. Yeah. I'm wearing red, you're wearing blue. Yeah, I think, I don't think that East you... Coast, West Coast, <laughs> right. we got the feud going on. Yeah. You know, I don't think that, uh, one of us needs a button up, okay? I'm the open top chest hair guy. I've got the chest tattoo. That's true, but I've got a little chest tattoo. Yeah, well, I have a big chest tattoo. Wait, is that the right side? Yeah, that's <laughs> the right side. It's <laughs> the right side. Uh, yeah, it was funny because last week I, I, I told Zach, because last week we were... Um, uh, taking a photo for our Truth and Justice Friday follow-up logo. So I told the guys to wear blue. And so we matched last week. Mm -hmm. And then this week, we both just happened to come in wearing flannel. Yeah. I wonder what will happen next week. Camo? We'll find out. Mm -hmm. But thank you, all of you, for tuning in. Um, sorry about last week. I, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the episode. You must have if you're listening to this one. Um, it was our full intention of covering the case that we're going to cover today last week, but we just, Zach's, Zach's always got a hard out on the days we record, kind of mm -hmm. his kids up from school, and uh, I was oblivious to it, and we just ran out of time. <laughs> um, so last week, we were planning on... Hold on, let's touch one thing real quick before we forget it again. Okay. Social media. Oh, right. We do have social media, guys. Yeah. So if you want to follow us on Facebook, you can find us at facebook.com slash bobandweavepod. You can find us on Instagram at Bob Weave Pod. You can find us on Twitter at Bob Weave Pod. You can also search us on YouTube just by searching Bob and Weave, or you can search Bob and Weave Podcast, and we'll come right up. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share all the videos. Yeah, and the podcast if you're just listening to the podcast and, and not the podcast. doing social media. And mm -hmm. definitely uh, hook up with us on those social media platforms because that's as we move forward. You know, the first episode was a lot of us talking about us. That's not going to be the case so much anymore because that was just kind of to tell you what we're doing. Here on out, we are going to be discussing topics, and we are very interested in your input. At some point, I want to work out once we we figure out what audience size we're looking at and how to do it, uh, maybe even a call-in segment, but for sure um, taking topic suggestions, reading emails, and even guests because I don't think I made clear enough last time that it is – you know. Zach and I are, I think we're pretty well aware of the fact that we're a couple of white guys in the Midwest. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, you know, our perspective is only that. I, I, I think. Especially if you look at us today. We're very white today. We're as white as you get in these flannel shirts. Yeah. <laughs> so we're aware of the fact that if we're covering, say, like racial issues in the streets of Baltimore, that we don't have any emotional connection to that. Yeah. We don't have perspective per se on that. And I say per se because I think where we add the benefit we add to the conversation is because we don't have any emotional attachment to the issue, we're able to just sit back and kind of logically look at both sides of the argument. Mm -hmm. You know, so that if this side feels this way and this side feels this way, we can research both of those and and then have a discussion about, you know, what argument kind of holds up, what doesn't, if there's a gray area in between. But what we want to do is have guests. So, you know, and, and there's a particular topic we have coming up. There's a guest I want to reach out to, a couple that I have in mind already. I mentioned Robbie Chowdhury last mm -hmm. week. But, you know, we, we want to get people in the studio with us that are directly connected to it. And, and Zach, we haven't really talked about this, but I, I, I thought a lot about it over the weekend. I don't want 
I want to have a fair and balanced discussion on these things, mm-hmm. but I don't want to debate. I, I agree. So, so meaning, I mean, you and I can debate all yeah. the time, but, but you know, like, so say we're talking about something like abortion. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have a pro-life and a pro-choice person in the room at the same time. Yeah. We don't need this big argument. We want to talk about it. Right. But what I would like to do is do an episode with a pro-life person. Okay. And then do another episode with a pro-choice person. So we can we can sort out and kind of moderate that discussion with some some space between the two. Okay, um, I think we'll see. You know, this is probably going to evolve as we go along. But he, he's breaking all this on me right now as we're re- recording. So right, this is a little. So when I <laughs> the reason for that, buddy, is be- <laughs> is because yeah, uh, I learned when I was when I was filming the television series for the West Memphis Three case. You know, my my showrunner would not let me in the same room with or discuss or talk with at all people that I was going to be interviewing. Mm-hmm. And it's because if you, if I do, you know, you tend to talk about things that you're going to talk about later. Yeah. And then the reaction isn't the same. So, Oh yeah. So congratulations. You're going to get sprung a lot of shit on you along I love the way. It. Uh, because I want to, I want to get your real reaction. Yeah. To the it genuine the first, reaction to it the first time. So, uh, th- that's kind of our plan going forward, but that's, you know, we, we spent that episode, the first episode explaining why we're doing it. I just, those few things, one, all the social media Zach mm-hmm. talked about. I know Instagram and Twitter are at Bob Weave Pod. Um, you, you made Facebook different? No, Facebook is Bob Weave Pod as well. I might have said it wrong. You did. You said Bob and Weave Pod. So it's Facebook.com slash Bob Weave Pod. Right. And you can edit that back in the other spot. Right, which is smarter for us to do it them all the same. Yeah. Zach, in case you haven't figured out, Zach's in charge of our social media. So if you don't like anything that happens, that's on Zach. Zach also is the one that created the wonderful logo you're looking at right now. Finally. Boop. Oh, for the up. video people. That's right, popping yeah. up in the video. <laughs> and it looks great. And with all that being said, you know, honestly, I got to tell you, I don't know how you're feeling about this. Probably more because now you, you had some time to prepare. I mm-hmm. was super duper prepared for this topic last week. Yeah. And then some other things came into my brain since then. And now I'm hoping that my notes hold up from last <laughs> week. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, it, you know, real quick, I want to mention it's completely off topic, but this morning I was watching finally, did you ever watch the, the Joe Rogan interview with Elon Musk? Uh, I watched most of it. Yeah. I had never seen it before. Just, that guy's an alien. Yeah. And so, but it, but it, it brought me to something that I, I want to ask you how you feel about it. Cause I was watching these two interact and watching Elon and it, and it, and it doesn't do it justice to listen. You got to watch, mm-hmm. watching him in the awkwardness in his inability to, communicate with other humans mm-hmm. or with humans if you think that he's an alien. I think he's an alien. He may be an alien. He said he's an alien in that yeah. he was joking around a little bit. But it got me to thinking like like how do we how do you measure intelligence? That's tough. But like someone like that, that guy's just running on like a whole different wavelength. A different yeah. Like he's on a different planet. Mm-hmm. But I but it, it, those two was was such an interesting if you haven't watched it, uh, listeners, viewers, uh Check it out. It's Elon Musk on on Joe Rogan because I'm looking at probably two of the most intelligent people that I've ever come across mm-hmm. in the same room, and they're intelligent for two completely different reasons. So Elon Musk is literally a rocket scientist, mm-hmm. and and all of the developments and things that that he's done and the way his brain works is just it's 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 almost superhuman. Yeah, but he can barely have a conversation with someone. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like. So many just awkward silences and n- like not answering questions the way that, you know, you know, Joe will ask him a question and he just kind of, he's off in his own little world. And to me, this, it's like, you got, you know, to me, the greatest, your greatest intelligence has been the person that can communicate, mm-hmm. which is Joe Rogan. Yeah. So Joe knows a lot about a lot or a little about a lot. Yeah. I think is a better way to put it. No, I agree. And I think the the big thing with like Elon is he has that intelligence that you can you can put a value to you can, measure it. You can measure it. It has a measurable. Yeah. Yeah. You were going where I was going, but yeah, he has that measurable IQ that, that you can really put something to where Joe Rogan's ability is really in his communication skills. It's unbelievable. He's one of the greatest communicators I've ever mm-hmm. seen. And I think that's why it stuck out to me was because he's always so good at opening people up and asking questions that no one else would ever ask her. He, and, and he's a chameleon, you know, yeah. he can, he can adapt to whoever's in front of him. And it, so it was like watching this guy who was a brilliant communicator with a guy that's just brilliant mm-hmm. and watching the two of them go back and forth. And it was, and, 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 and really watch, it was, it was cool to watch Joe throughout it 
adapt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you could see him figuring out, okay, this dude is not going to react the way I think he's going to react. I got to change my approach and things like that. Yeah. But anyway, that's nothing to do with what we're talking about now, but it was, I know that you like Rogan too, and I was Mm -hmm. just watching it and and it just, it really like, that's that conundrum of, because I went through it with my kids, which is going to be another topic. And I know I'm still rambling. You're welcome, everybody. These are extra. This part's free. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, Like my kids going through school, you know, my oldest stepson just graduated, really, really had a hard time in school. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's, he, he would say he's not book smart. I just, I would say that he just doesn't learn well in that way, but the dude is super intelligent and, and I've always thought he was very intelligent because of his ability to interact with and communicate with people Yeah. to, um, uh, convince people, persuade people, mm-hmm. even manipulate people, you know, whether that's good or bad, um, but so is it, it, that, that, so that's why that was always on my mind. Cause it's like, he went through and he went through life with really feeling feeling dumb. He would say, I'm just stupid. I can't do this. And it drives me crazy because like, you're not stupid. You just don't, you don't learn like they want you to learn, but he's incredibly artistic and all these things, which is I think undervalued in our society. But anyway, that was in my mind when I was watching that. I'm like, okay, here's a guy who's smart, mm-hmm. ge- genius, and he can't have a conversation with someone. Yeah. So which one's more valuable? And I think it depends on the space you're in. No, I agree. And it, and it's it has a I guess it comes back to what what we're doing here, which is to see that there's a great area in between. Mm-hmm. And the answer to me is it's not Elon's really smart and Joe's not, mm-hmm. or Joe's really smart and Elon's not because Joe can communicate and Elon can't. It's they're both both answers are right. They, mm-hmm. They're both just have different strengths and different weak weaknesses. Um, I still think Joe wins, though. <laughs> I sure as hell would rather hang out with Joe. I, I would rather hang out with Joe too, but I don't know about if he wins that one. Right? Yeah, I, I guess mean, it all Elon's the... Elon's pretty out there. He's he's pretty intelligent. He's got it figured out. He sold a rocket or uh, uh, flamethrowers. Yeah, on dude, his website, they launched a rocket and landed it. Right, it landed itself. It landed itself. It's impressive. That's real impressive. Yeah. Anyway, before we get into the same problem space and issue that we had last week, <laughs> we should go ahead and get started. So today's episode, we're going to cover a controversial case in the news. Um, by the time we ever get this thing out here, maybe not so much anymore, <laughs> um, but what we're going to bring it back up, and that is the murder of Mr. Botham Jean in Dallas, Texas. So Botham Jean was a uh, an African-American man, mm-hmm. uh, and he was... Uh, by all accounts, like a great guy. I mean, he was um, he was on the worship team at his church, and just I mean, just a, a no trouble with the law. Sounds like just a good guy mm-hmm. sitting in his apartment eating some ice cream, and, and this happened on September sixth, two thousand eighteen. So just over a year ago. Okay. And off duty police officer Amber Geiger has a long shift at work. She's tired. Goes home. This is what she says. She's well, and it's confirmed she was working. Mm-hmm. Long shift at work, she's tired, she goes home into this big apartment complex. She claims her story is that she went to go into her apartment and opens the door, walks in, thinks she's in her apartment, is actually in Botham Jean's apartment, sees this black man sitting on the couch or the table at, and in his own apartment, thinking he's sitting in her apartment. Mm-hmm ends up opening fire on him and kills him. So that's the basics of the story of what happened. Now, her story about what happened changed a lot of times. Uh, but what we do know is that she opened fire with her service weapon and killed. It was it was her police-issued pistol. Mm-hmm. And she kills 26-year-old Botham Jean. Three days later, she was finally arrested, charged with manslaughter, not murder. Okay. But that took three days. That is strange. Right. I mean, it, it, no question about it. I, she's she's the one that calls 911. I just shot this guy. They mm-hmm. show up, and then she's got this story for them. And three days later, she gets charged with manslaughter, and she was released immediately on a $300,000 bond. Geiger's first story to investigators was that the door was locked. She said that she tried her key several times, kept fighting with the lock, and eventually, Botham Jean swings the door open, wearing only underwear, and she immediately fired. Okay. So her story is she can't get in, can't get in of her own apartment, she thinks. Mm-hmm. And then here's this guy who happens, you know, she's a white lady, he's a black guy. I don't know if that plays or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he swings the door open, and she's like, holy shit, what's this guy doing in my apartment? 
and shoots him and kills him. Later, her story changed to now the door was unlocked. She actually entered the apartment, walked in, saw him sitting there, told him to show her his hands, and he didn't because would you? Yeah. No, if I you're mean, sitting in your house? Yeah. That's a tough That's a tough question because you would say no. You would want to say no. You're not right. going to show him your hands. But And she's not in uniform, by the way. Well, if she's not in uniform, then yeah, you're probably definitely not doing it. So I didn't know she wasn't in uniform. I was assuming she was leaving work still in uniform coming mm-hmm. home. I, well, I don't think so. No, I think she's she no she's off duty, not in uniform. Mm-hmm. I think, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that was my understanding. She was not in uniform, plain clothes. And so I'm thinking, if I'm sitting in, in my house mm-hmm. and any human being walks in and points a gun at me, I'm going to assume that person is a threat. Yeah, I'm not going to follow their commands unless it's just out of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, but she says that uh, she told him to show her, show her his hands. He didn't do it, and so she opened fire. I believe the forensics indicate that I haven't been able to get a hold of trial transcripts yet, and that's not really what we're doing here to go as in-depth as we do in Truth and Justice. But I believe the forensics indicate that he was sitting down Mm -hmm. when she shot him. Um, So that that was September 6th. On November 30th last year, she finally got indicted by a grand jury, not for manslaughter, but for murder. Um, There's there's a lot of... Now, this this whole case gets really controversial when, I mean, it's, it's already controversial for a couple of reasons. One, you've got an epidemic in our country of an unarmed black man being shot by a police officer, yep. period. It's also a white police officer. Mm-hmm. It's also a woman and a man. You know, so you've got a lot going on there. You've got... You got a citizen and a police officer. You got a woman and a man. You got black and white. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a lot of reasons why people could presume why she did what she did, and you could. But more importantly, I guess what I want to focus on today, because I think it's impossible to get into what's going on in her brain, yeah, is how the system reacted to it. Okay. Is what's really got me interested in it. Because what ultimately happens is, just a few weeks ago, she was convicted of murder. And sentenced to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, for any of you that are Truth and Justice listeners, we've dealt with cases like George Powell, uh, who just got released due to prosecutorial misconduct, our season four case. He was convicted of walking into a convenience store, pointing a gun at someone, and stealing less than $1,000 and walking out and not hurting anyone, got sentenced to 20 years. Yeah. Kenny Snow was convicted of robbing a man for a thousand dollars, got sentenced to forty years. Poor black man mm-hmm. in Texas. These are all Texas yeah. cases. Amber Geiger gets convicted of walking into a man's house and shooting him in cold blood. Now, now you can debate whether or not it was actually murder or not, but she was convicted, right? So she's yeah. convicted of murder and gets sentenced to ten years. And the questions that I have in my mind are: Is it because she's white? Is it because she's a woman or is it because she's a police officer or none of the above? You know, my my guess on that would be more leaning towards the fact that she's a police officer. I, I feel the same way. You know, that they're they are entrusted to protect and serve. Mm-hmm. She thought she was doing what was right. Right. Regardless of the outcome. Mm-hmm. She thought she was doing what was right. I don't think she did, but go no, ahead. No, I I well, I'm I'm saying if she really truly thought that that was an intruder, she's wanting to protect herself, mm-hmm. her 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 property. Now I don't know the, the laws. I should have looked this up in Texas. In Michigan, there you know you have the right. If someone is in your household, you can shoot them. Right. It's a castle statute. It's a you, you can't retreat any further than your own yeah, home. Yeah. So that's I mean, I'm not saying by any means I'm not defending her, but there are those moments in her head that I think that's where she's going with this is. That she she's defending herself or believes she's defending herself. But see, how does she even make that argument? And if, and if you don't feel this way, play devil's advocate at least with me because mm-hmm. I want to have the conversation with somebody. Yeah, that that does it. But how are you how are you fucking defending yourself when? And there's people that I have online discussed it with some people. Mm-hmm. But she's between him and the door mm-hmm. in any one of these scenarios. Like the castle laws exist if someone's coming into your house. So I mean you can't you can't retreat any further. Last ditch, you can use deadly force. Mm-hmm. 
she walked into that, even if, let's say it was her house. Mm-hmm. So let, let, let's say this is her house. She she has the right apartment and he is an intruder. She walks into her house and he's sitting there in her house, mm-hmm. eating ice cream, doing whatever he's doing. Okay, so he he's an intruder, but what's the threat? Mm-hmm. He's not armed and you're one step away from the door. Yeah. You can just turn around and walk out, mm-hmm. call the police. You know, I mean, devil's advocate wise, does she know he's unarmed? She doesn't know he's unarmed. Now, I don't. She doesn't know he's armed either. Well, you're absolutely right. Right. And being that they're on what she believes is the fourth floor, I think, mm-hmm. the only way in is that door. Right. So, you know, maybe she's assuming he's going to make that escape towards her. Yeah. Now, I'm not defending her. I don't, I, by any means, I don't think this is I'm, right. This is going to be our new theme. I'm going to make you be the bad guy. But I'm going to be the bad guy, I guess, today. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking is he is, or she is thinking that he's going to attack her to get out Mm -hmm. and opens fire. I I just feel like. Now, I have a hard time with that. Also, being the fact that the evidence suggests that he was either seated or cowering, Mm -hmm. you know. When she shot him. When she shot him. Well, and and even with that argument, because, you know, I've had, so so the other side of this has been um, one of my listeners uh, her name's Kathy w- was, was commenting on the, on the post and said like, it, it you don't understand the fear. And I don't, cause I'm not a woman, mm-hmm. but she said as a woman living alone, coming home and, and feeling the threat of somebody in there, like, I don't think it should be murder. It should be manslaughter or, or whatever it is mm-hmm. or, or nothing even. But, and I, and I, I understand that, but I still feel like if there's that threat, so what you said, so, so, well, yeah, but even if she leaves the door, he's also going to leave the door. Well, mm-hmm. you, you make an effort before you use deadly force. And that's what really gets me is she's a trained police officer. Mm-hmm. I don't think an untrained citizen should have made the move she did, mm-hmm. but she's a trained police officer. And one of the, the biggest things they train on, one of the most important elements of police training is rules of engagement and when it is okay to engage and use deadly force. Mm-hmm. And that was absolutely not because she could have retreated. She could have retreated. She has her gun. She knows she has her gun. Yeah. She could have backed out, ran away. And if he continued to come after her where she has no other choice, then use deadly force. Mm -hmm. But just to, just to open fire and shoot him. Um, and I want to loop back to a minute ago, we were saying, you know, was it, was the lighter sentence and the lighter reaction because, you know, was it, was it for no reason? Was it just, was it because just the circumstances Mm -hmm. or was it because she was a woman or because, she was white or because she was a police officer and he said probably because she was a police officer. But what did you see in the, yeah, I know you did cause I sent it to you I, and you probably have more details on it than me just yesterday mm-hmm. or a couple of days ago. Monday. Yeah. Monday there was in Fort Worth, which is like the twin city to Dallas right next door, a white male police officer shot an unarmed black female yeah, person unarmed in their own home. The you know he By was. By the way, you were a goddamn menace over there. I know, when banging it's shit killing around. me. <laughs> it's killing me. I'm trying not to be. But as far as that officer goes, I believe they they arrested him for murder uh-huh. and are charging with a murder right away. Uh, right. And I think the big thing with that is not the police officer fact. I mean, he is a police officer. They have a body cam on that. Right. They clearly saw what he saw mm-hmm. and clearly saw how wrong it was. Right. So that is her like one bit of defense is that there is no visual evidence of what really the happened. The only story there is hers. Yes. In the ones the in the in the story the forensics paint mm-hmm. of it. But yeah, in his I saw the body cam footage. I didn't have time today because of some other technical issues we were having to to really study too much about this other case. But from what I saw, that someone called in a welfare check because some because this lady's door was open. Mm-hmm. And, and it was Early hours in the morning. Right. And and he comes to the door and he sees movement through a window mm-hmm. and opens fire. Now, have you, did you you researched into it a little more. Was there anything to indicate to him there was a threat? There was nothing, to in, nothing that I read that indicated there was a threat. They did say that he made, you know, a verbal, you know, put your hands up or whatever, but right. immediately opened fire. So there was no... Through the window, right? Yes, through the window. Uh-huh. There was no, put your hands up, she didn't comply... Then open fire. It was put your hands up, bang. You know what I mean? It was immediate. Right. So the reality of it is the situations are very similar. Mm-hmm. Ex- except for, to me, it's even worse. You, you, you could argue for him 
he thought he heard something or or saw a shadow that made him feel like there was a gun or whatever. Yeah. You know, he was he was there called to service to be there as opposed to her who just walked. I mean, essentially, these are the facts. She walked into a man's apartment and shot him in cold blood. Mm -hmm. That's it. And now, now and it's, it's the why that brings up the discussion. And mm -hmm. I know one thing that really affected Amber Geiger's um, uh, outcome or the, the fact that she was convicted is she didn't offer, she didn't render any aid to the man. Mm -hmm. So she shoots him. Now, surely at that, because I've heard people say like all the apartments were the same and they all look the same. It's like, no, you don't. Absolutely not. Your furniture is the same. Right. Your furniture, the pictures the, on the wall. Even the location of your furniture is the same. Yeah. No, you know? no. Yeah. I mean, maybe for a second you might think, but, but I mean, you would, I've experienced never with a house, but I've experienced it with like my car. Mm -hmm. My truck is not entirely unique. You know, mm -hmm. I have a big black truck and there's other people that have the same big black truck. And actually, when Mike and I have been traveling for Truth and Justice, I actually got into somebody else's truck. <laughs> it was a weird, it, dude, it was so weird. So it was one of those gas stations or truck stops where you can go in from either side mm -hmm. and the two sides are identical. Okay. And so we walked in, what you ever do there, you just get turned around. So I go into the bathroom mm -hmm. and I came out and I turned the wrong way. And usually you'll realize it when you get out there and you look around like what's going, what's different. Well, I opened the door and my truck was sitting in the exact spot it was sitting on the other side. Exact spot. So it yeah. was like it was like one space left of the door on both doors was my truck and this other guy's truck. But I get up, see my truck, do do do, not even thinking. Open the door. It was unlocked, just like my truck was. Yeah. And but it took me a millisecond. And and this truck was identical. It was the exact same year, make and model. Yeah. Same leather interior, same screen on it, everything. And it was literally I opened the door, and the second I opened the door, I could tell it's not as clean as my truck. Mm -hmm. There's not the coffee cup where I left my car. Immediately, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Now, my reaction wasn't I'm in the wrong truck. My reaction was like, what the fuck happened to my truck? Yeah. While I was in the gas station. But then that was like, oh, God, oh, close the door. And then I had to really sit there and take a mental inventory about what happened to my truck. Yeah. Like I was in a different dimension because I had walked <laughs> out that wrong door. But, you know, so, yeah, she might walk in for a second and be like, oh, I think this is my place. But like, I mean, how long does that last? Certainly by the time you've shot him and looked around, you've got to realize, oh shit. And she knew. Mm -hmm. She absolutely, as a matter of fact, I think we have her 911 tape on, I think it's on YouTube. Let me look it up here real quick. But like you said, without without offering assistance, I mean, as a first responder, you, you at the very least are trained in some of that, and trained in first aid, trained in this, this trained in being able to help these people. So even if you know you, what you did was wrong, you still have the the ethical duty to help that person. And she just allowed that person to lay there. Right. And that's even if the guy's guilty of something. Exactly. You're exactly. Still, you still are going to now render aid. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen a lot of times as a firefighter working alongside of cops when they when they would taser someone. As soon as they have him under control, then it's get the ambulance here. Let's get him taken care of. She shoots him. And, and I guess my point about the apartment and the furniture was even if she did think she was in her own apartment. Within a second after shooting him, she has to realize, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the 911 tape, which I'm going to play right now, I think uh, demonstrates that she absolutely knew that she was in the wrong apartment, and so, which means she absolutely just shot the an innocent man, and she does nothing. Let me play this here. I think this is it. Have you heard this? Mm-mm. Super duper internet. Oh, I'm not on. Oh, good. What? Okay. Well. Dallas yeah, one. This is Carla. Where's your emergency? Hi. Hi this is an um, off-duty officer. Um, can I get? I need emails. Um, uh, I'm in number. Um, what's your address? Do you need police okay. as well or just EMS? Yes, I need both. Okay. What's the address? Uh, I'm at apartment number fourteen seventy-eight. I'm in 1478. And what's the yeah. address there? Um, it's 1210 South Lamar. 1410. 1478. Yeah. What's I missed, going on? I I'm an off-duty officer. I thought it was in my apartment, and I shot a guy thinking that he was thinking it was my apartment. He you shot someone. Uh, yes, I thought it was my apartment. I'm fucked. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Okay. And the, where where are you at right now? I'm in. Uh, what do you mean? 
I'm inside the apartment with him. Hey, come on. What's your name? I'm Amber Geiger. I need to get me. I'm, I'm in. Okay, we have help on the way. I know, but Hold I'm, on. I'm going to lose my job. I thought it was my apartment. Okay, I'm hey, fine. Hold on. Fuck. Okay, stay with me, okay? I am. I am. I need, I need my new supervisor. Oh, hey, bud. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Come on. Oh, fuck. I, I thought it was my apartment. I understand. No, we, we have help. I thought it was my apartment. Have help more. <sighs> Hurry, please. Yeah. They're on their way. I, I, I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. I could have sworn I parked on the third floor. Okay, I understand. No. I thought it was my apartment. 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 And then what's the gate code there? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. I need them. I thought it was my apartment. They're trying to get in there. There, We have an officer there. You don't know the gate code? No. I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. Okay, and what what floor are you in right now? The fourth floor. Fourth. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. They're coming. They're bud. I'm sorry, man. Okay, where was he? Where was he shot? He's on the top top left. I think you're with Dallas PD, right? Yes. Oh my god, I'm done. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. Hey, bud. They're trying to get there to you, okay? I know. Stay with me, bud. Oh, here we go again. I wanted. I actually haven't listened to that uh, before. I waited to listen to it so we could hear it yeah. for the first time oh, together. Yeah. Okay, they're almost there. They're already there. They're trying to get to you. I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. Holy fuck! I thought it was my apartment. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, they're trying to get there to you. Do you hear them? Do you see them? No. No. I... I... How the fuck did I get out of there? How did I get out of there? I'm so tired. Hurry. Oh, we're here. Oh, we're here. Okay, go ahead and talk to him. No, it's me. I'm off duty. I'm off duty. I thought I thought they were in my apartment. I thought this was my floor. 
Hmm. What do you think of that? It's uh, I don't know what to think of it. To be honest, like it's pretty tough. I mean, that struck me emotionally in uh, different ways than I thought. In a couple ways, mm-hmm. you know, I was surprised how many times she said she thought it was her apartment. I right. Mean, that's that's strange to me. See, I didn't find that strange. I, I, I my impression from it was, well, let me. Basically, when you heard it, do you think that she intended to kill him? I would say no. Me, and I should remember, obviously she pulled the trigger. She intended to kill him. But do you think that it was something other than her? I don't think it was malicious. If that's what you're asking, yeah, that's more what I'm asking. Yeah, I don't think it was malicious at all. It does sound like that she was confused. Mm-hmm. You know, truly thought it was her apartment. But at the same point, you still have to wonder how she didn't pick up any signs that things were right. different. Yeah, and, and and after listening to that, there are things that really made me feel very strongly that okay. You know, fuck you. That's murder. You're, she needs to be in prison for the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. Um, one of which was very early in the call. She doesn't say how injured he is. What's happening? She says, "I'm going to lose my job." Yep. Oh, fuck! I caught I'm gonna that lose as my well. Job. I'm going to lose my job, and that just just pissed me off. Yeah, I caught that as well. That upset me. It's like that's what's on the front of your mind right now. Mm-hmm. But then, as the call goes on, her kind of off the phone where she, where she's you know turning, talking to him. You know, hey bud, hey bud, hey bud, hey bud, hey bud. You know, when mm-hmm. she's she's trying to. Like I, I feel like I, I, I hear she's genuinely. I think she's genuinely sorry mm-hmm. that she did it. I don't know if she's sorry because of how it's affecting her. You know, kind of the. I don't want to peg her as a psychopath. I don't think she is, but you know, and when you're studying criminal behavior, you know, you the the true psychopath is like, well, they can't show emotion. Well, they can show some emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, a psychopath can get really, really sad. Um, I said the guy from Colorado a couple of years ago that, that killed his wife and kids and, and put them in the, the oil well. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember his name, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm pulling a blank on his name. Uh, some of his representatives actually reached out to me on truth and justice, wanted me to represent him. So I got to anal- I analyzed the case mm-hmm. and uh, he's, he's a fucking psycho. <laughs> he's a psycho. Yeah. And they're like, no, he's not because look, look in those, in those police interviews where he's, he's, he's showing, Mike and I actually did a, a statement analysis with that uncut. It's on YouTube, an uncut video of him doing a, uh, 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 an interview. Yeah. Uh, like right before he finally confessed where he's pleading with the media to help him find him. And he's saying, and, he, and there are certain indications we're looking for, indications of deception and body language and, and behaviors. And, and, you know, and Mike's learning some of them too. And he's like, well, when he's saying like, I wish they were here. I miss them. Like he's not showing any indications of deception. Like he's not because that's the only time he's being genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, so a psychopath can be really sad and upset because they only care about themselves is, is a very simplistic view of what a sociopath is or a psychopath. And so it's like if, if they could they could kill their their child mm-hmm. and then cry and be really upset and genuine about the fact they're upset they get their, but it's not because of what they did to their kid. It's because Later, they realize, man, now I'm sitting here by myself. I wish my kid was here. Man, I did that. Now I don't have my kid here. You know, it's only about how it affects themselves. Yeah. And there's some of that in, not, again, not saying she's a psychopath or a sociopath, but, you know, it's really hard to decipher. Is she upset because she killed him or is she upset because she screwed herself mm-hmm. in her career and and probably going to jail, which she did end up going to jail? Um, but I definitely, I'm glad I listened to it because now I, 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 I she definitely does seem like genuine regret. I mm-hmm. definitely don't think this was a premeditated yeah. a, intention to go kill the guy. You heard her say, I'm tired. And I think that was part of her defense mm-hmm. was that she'd been working super long hours and she was tired. But I think she also she also knew that she messed up. That's why she changed her story. Yeah. And, and in the video, I mean, or in the audio, I mean, she's saying, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Mm-hmm. Which... You know, that's kind of weird. You you meant to. You pulled the gun. Right. You pulled the trigger. You know, the only thing I can think when she's saying that, and and I might catch some flack for this, is improper training. Right. You see a lot of police officers, and, and I'm a very big supporter of police officers, they don't get the training they actually need or deserve, especially with their firearms. Mm-hmm. They have a very limited amount of ammunition that they let those fire fi- or that, that they let those officers use. Right. And... It could be very well that she 
pulled the gun to protect herself and pulled the trigger without necessarily meaning to, without trigger discipline. Did she shoot him? I thought she shot him twice. Did she shoot him more than once? I have no idea. I may be blending cases in my mind. Maybe I should have looked that one up. I don't yeah, know. I'm not sure. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't realize this. Sort of like I didn't mean to actually pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, potential. I don't think she made that argument because mm -hmm. I think she made the argument. She pulled the trigger because. Because. Okay. But so for me, going back to police training, that's, that's the thing that really, that really is a stickler for me mm -hmm. as a police officer. One thing they are heavily trained on, maybe not getting a lot of time in at the range, mm -hmm. but they are heavily trained on when it is okay to use deadly force. Yep. It is an absolute worst case, last ditch effort, worst case scenario before you ever use deadly force, especially now that they give them tasers and the, you know, there's, they, they're giving them more options. But a lot of times I have friends who are a lot of friends who are cops that are like, you know, they're, they're almost telling you we'd rather them get away than you shoot them. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, over the last 10 years with a lot of the police brutality cases going on and, um, uh, and how, how everything is so publicized now. And the last thing they ever want to do is, is to have a cop pull the trigger when they're not supposed to. So my point being, she's had that training and yet she still goes in and pulls the trigger. So then it goes back to motive. I mean, do you think that, what do you think a motive was now motive? We think of motive, like a premeditated murder. What were their motive? But I mean, there's, when I say motive, I mean, every action that you do comes from a thought. Mm -hmm. And what's the thought? Why pull the trigger? You know, I, you have to feel that she thought she was in danger. That is the, that is the, the end of the line for me is that when she entered that apartment, assuming it was hers, she had to assume she was in danger. And that right. is the only way that I can fathom her pulling the trigger. If it's an innocent mistake. If it's an innocent mistake. Now, I know that they have uncovered a ton of stuff about this woman. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there is potentially racist text messages that went out. So I didn't see the text messages were there. I, I saw some of the stuff she posted on social media. Yeah. There was text messages that went out that were, that were leaning towards racist. Um, I wouldn't say they were necessarily full out racist posts or right. racist text messages, but they were definitely racist leaning text messages. Right. Well, and that's, so that, that kind of gets into the conundrum of the stuff we were talking about last week about the, to the tolerance boxes. Because mm -hmm. I didn't see the text, so I can't speak to that. But I saw the social media posts that people grabbed where they were saying she posted all these racist things on her social media. But the ones I saw were, they are considered racist by some in today's climate. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, she had some comment, you know, when, when Colin Kaepernick was, you know, started the, the, the routine of taking a knee during the national anthem. Mm -hmm. And it was like a anti Kaepernick yeah. meme, you know? So, so like someone that had, and that's one of those things, again, there's two sides of it, not defending her, but the people that are like, no, you don't kneel for the national anthem because that's our country. You stand for the flag and that's what we believe. Mm -hmm. Then the other side is like, no, but for solidarity's sake, and because we're trying to make a change here, we're taking a knee. I think there's, there's valid arguments on both sides. I agree on that one. But, by her posting that, they're taking that and putting up, say, look, it's a racist thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't think that necessarily means she's racist. Now, there's a couple of other ones that definitely make me feel like she maybe leans mm -hmm. that way. I'm guessing she probably doesn't have a lot of black friends. Yeah, that's what I'm leaning to. And, you know? and I do know in a couple of those text messages, which, again, I mean, when this happened, they pulled out everything and drug her through the dirt with everything. You know I mean? They mm -hmm. they. She was having an affair. They called all that out. Right. And and some of these mess, these text messages were sent to the person she was having an affair with. And they uh -huh. did say, you know, there were mentions of her working with black officers and not being happy about it. You know, she was working oh, in so a department were, saying. So she legit racist. Yeah. yeah right. Well, I mean, I don't, <laughs> like you said, I don't necessarily mean that that's racist. I do. I mean, if she's, if she's saying text that says, I don't, I don't like working with a black officer, mm -hmm. then that's fucking racist as far as I'm concerned. No, I agree. I agree. And Maybe I, you're racist because you don't think so. I, I come from a biracial family, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I come from a biracial family, which is, that's a whole nother issue. But it's a tactic. I put him back on his heels so yeah. I can try to make a point. He, he got me. He <laughs> got me a little bit. But yeah, I mean, she had a text message saying, I can't remember the, the exact verbiage of it. So please don't find me. It. But it, it's along the lines of like, I had to work with, with these black officers today. And you know how that is. Oh. Well, maybe, maybe black officers just act a certain way. 
Like maybe that means she has to eat a certain kind of food. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is is that is that leaning racist? Is that racist? Let's see what they actually say. Okay, Geiger let's see what they actually text actually say. Text messages. But you know, that probably does lean in there. Is that like we've talked about before, it is a white woman who happens to be a police officer who enters an apartment with a black male in her apartment. Right. You know, forget the police officer part at the moment. You know, she is thinking it's a white woman entering a what she believes is her apartment with a black male in there. You would assume that she's afraid. Right. You know? But see, I feel like I don't like the fact that I don't, I don't think black plays into that equation. I don't yeah. think that's an adjective that should matter. Now, a woman, you tell me a woman walking into an apartment with a man mm-hmm. in there, and that makes her afraid. Mm-hmm. But if she walks in and that man happens, uh, and to that point, so if she walked in there and you were in there in your lumberjack outfit that mm-hmm. you're wearing right now. She should still be afraid. Right. I don't want to get shot. Should, but would she have shot you? Probably not. Right, because you're wearing flannel. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's for real, though. I mm-hmm. mean, it's, that, that, based on the, on what I'm hearing, that's what it sounds like to me. Like, if that guy's sitting there, well, he's wearing un- flannel underwear, I guess. Mm-hmm. The guy's wearing underwear in there. But she walks in, and it's a white dude mm-hmm. sitting in there. Would she pull the trigger? I don't think she would have. I don't know. It's been yeah. my opinion. I just from from a little bit I know. Uh, and the other thing is, you have to. By me saying everything that I'm saying, I am not defending her. I think she is guilty as fuck. But you would think that she would have to when she went in to assess it a little bit. This guy was supposedly sitting on the couch eating ice cream when she shot him. Now, do you uh-huh. think if he was a burglar or a rapist or a killer, he's going to be sitting on her couch eating ice cream waiting for her to get home? Yeah. I mean, so there's – and we're going to run out of time before we can get too far into it. The hardest thing is none of us can know what she was thinking. I just – I was I was ignoring you because I was uh, – That's my life. I know you were ignoring right. me. I, well, I was reading – I was looking for these texts and I found – so what it says, damn, I was at this area with five different black officers. And then Geiger echoed his text and said – not racist, but just have a different way of working, and it shows. So that's like you, the qualifier. Mm-hmm. As soon as you say not racist, not racist, but yeah, I got a black friend. Right, I'm, I'm like, not. I'm not trying to be racist. I have a black. I got friend, a black friend. I can I'm not say racist. it all. Yeah, yeah. So anytime you start a sentence with not racist, but uh, is 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 problematic. I think. But she says, just have a different way of working, and it shows. I mean that's. I'd say that's certainly bordering on race on mm-hmm. racism. And then uh when does this end? LOL. These I'm reading text from her. When does this end? LOL read a text sent to Geiger. She replied, When MLK is dead, oh wait. Okay, that's racist. That's racist. Yeah. I yeah. And, and not racist, just like a label, like that's fucked up. Yeah. So that's it's hard to read from this article in context, but Something. Uh, so here we go. Let me back up a paragraph. It says, During a 2018 parade on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Geiger texts another officer about their lengthy shifts as attendees celebrated the black civil rights activist legacy. When does this end, LOL? Read a text sent to Geiger, and then she replied, when MLK is dead. Oh, wait. Like a joke. Yeah. Maybe it's a twisted sense of humor. Cops have twisted sense of humor. Um, I know that from being firemen, but... I, there's certainly, I, I'll say this, there's enough there mm-hmm. to have to consider the fact that, and again, I don't think, my opinion, I don't think that she went to this guy's apartment, like, I'm going to go kill this guy mm-hmm. and then stage it as whatever. I yeah. don't think that's what happened. But I think that had it been a white man sitting in her, what she thought was her apartment, mm-hmm. I don't think she pulled the trigger. I do believe she thought it was her apartment when she pulled the trigger. Yeah. Um. It, and that's, and I didn't honestly coming into this. I thought, matter of fact, I've even said with people I was talking about it online, like there's no fucking way, you know. But back to what I said about my truck, mm-hmm. like within a second you realize you're in the wrong place. But here in the nine one one call, looking at more of the uh, the case facts and and seeing some of the stuff, I think when she got in, she got scared and got tunnel vision, mm-hmm. you know, which is a real thing. It's an actual physical phenomenon where literally she's staring at this guy, her perceived threat. And she's not looking at the furniture or any of that other stuff. 
And so I can, I can see how she didn't notice that she was in the wrong apartment. And I can see how, but I, I still don't think there's any justification whatsoever for her to have pulled the trigger. No, not whatsoever, especially being a trained officer. Right. Having, having the training for rules of engagement and mm-hmm. when it's okay and not okay to use deadly force, it should have never happened. I think that her concern afterwards was mostly due to how it was going to affect her. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I want to talk about, before we close out, I want to talk about something in this case that will probably always stick with me. And that is the fact that Botham Jean's brother. I'm already Googling it. (laughs) During sentencing, asked to give her a hug and forgave her. Now, how powerful is that? It's really, it's incredibly powerful. And that's, I want to find one of these that's not too long. This one is brother embraces emotional moments. It wasn't just the embrace. Um, but I think it was it was what he said too, mm-hmm. and so I I think that is the the story is this after the trial she's convicted, and I, and I think I'll, I'll play this as we close, which is going to be moments away. Um, he asked to speak at the at the sentencing or mm-hmm. whatever it was, which isn't uncommon. They sometimes they ask us the yeah any the any time, yeah, too, yeah yeah they'll they'll ask for victim impact statements. And in that statement, he said that he forgives her. He he's a Christian. Hope mm-hmm. she finds, um, hope she finds God and she gets saved. And it's a like what an incredible human being, first of all. Mm-hmm. And, and now now there's a lot of people here listening that are like, "Fuck that! She killed my brother." You know, you should never forgive her. But that's to me like that. I don't know if I could do that. No, I don't think I could do it. And I can tell you as I told. I mean, you, I'd like to think that I could do that, but I don't right. know that I could. Well, and especially it's like for me as a Christian myself, like that, that's what I believe. You know, I told you like Mm -hmm. a lot of people, I don't identify with a lot of those, like 99% of what other people who say they're Christians do, but that's, you know, it's, it's all about forgiveness and love. And that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. If you truly believe in Christianity and for him to put that into practice was super duper powerful. And, 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 and I hope that maybe some of you listening to this that have the opinion of the people that that somehow are still listening, but really almost pulled the trigger when I said that I was a, a Christian in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll listen to this and say, okay, maybe there is another side of that. Not to say you need to be that, mm-hmm. or it's not okay that you are, or whatever you are. Is, I mean, I think every what you being agnostic or who, anybody being whatever, it's all acceptable to me. I think everybody should be able to live in their own space and their own faith. Mm-hmm. But for the people that have this opinion of Christianity that is like, if you're a Christian, you're just a really bad person. I want you to listen to Botham Jean's brother right here. This is after um, Geiger was sentenced or convicted at least. I hope you go to God with all what, all the guilt. All the things, the bad things you may have done in the past, each and every one of us may have done something that we're not supposed to do. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't going to ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's, what, that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not going to say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. 
Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. I'm gonna mute this, so yeah, that's tough to watch. Playing. That's tough to watch, but I think that's powerful. And I don't think it matters. You know, he's talking about Christianity in here. I don't right. think it really matters about Christianity. It's about being a human being. Right. And yeah, yeah, I don't think that, that that you have to be a Christian to have that view. No, set. absolutely. But I think it's 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 just a powerful thing and you can see for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you can see the video right now mm -hmm. of them um embracing each other. I think it was cool that the judge let that happen. Yeah, I am too. Um but yeah, he he really in all of this I think is is the hero in yeah. all of it that he was able to um I don't know the the hero, but I don't I don't know the right word. It's very I'm I'm moved a little emotionally even watch. I've seen it a couple times before already. He is the catalyst for change of this whole thing. That's the way to put it. That's exactly right. And with that being said, uh, I want to thank you guys all for listening to episode two um, next week. Write us at any of our social media, which is Facebook dot com slash Bob Weave Pod mm -hmm. on Instagram Bob Weave Pod on Twitter at Bob Weave Pod. And you can search us on YouTube by searching Bob and Weave Podcast. And make sure you like, subscribe, share the show. Make sure you go on to Apple Podcasts, subscribe to the show, share the show with your friends, and get this thing out there. Right. So you can go to any of those places and let us know if there's any topics you want to cover. we got a whole list we're going to get into. Um, again, I hope you, you enjoyed this one. I hope it inspired some thought in you. And uh, this is, I think, a lot of what you can expect. I mean, I don't think we really came to any conclusions, but uh, uh, both of us have tears in our eyes when yep. it's over with, which was a little unexpected today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but with all that being said, I want to thank you guys. We love you all. Zach, thanks for being my friend. Love you, buddy. Love you too, man. See ya.